there and welcome back to Building the Boys. We now have issue 35 of Hush Let's Build the Titanic. Now in this one, even though we're doing engine room, we're not touching the engine room floor, we're not touching the engines. We've got a brand new part to build, which is lovely after, you know, repetition. Uh, we're building the gearbox. And the gearbox ultimately is what's going to power these engines, well, it's what's going to make these engines turn. Um, now, I do have a very minor concern with the gearbox, and I'll tell you what it is. Uh, this looks suspiciously like the Ecto-1 gearbox that was used in the roof lights. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, well, to a degree, because the, the, the lights spun beautifully, worked perfectly. However, it sounded like a coffee grinder. Because it was plastic gears in a plastic casing, um, it, it made a racket, right? I mean, honestly, it was... It's bad. This is this really strong whirring. Now, I think part of that was the motors. The motors kind of sucked. Um, and I, there's no way that motor's going on this. We're going to need a much more powerful motor to do that. Um, but it is a concern that maybe our Titanic is going to make a god-awful noise. I'm just assuming. I'm just jumping to conclusion. So don't panic. I don't mean to panic you. I'm just saying it. It is a minor concern at this stage. Now, as I've already stated, I doubt I'm ever going to really run this engine, to be honest with you. Mine is going into a glass case, and there it will live. It's kind of like the steam feature. The steam feature is something that is lovely, it does it, but it's not why I bought this. I'm not doing this because I want it to blow steam. Um, I'm doing it because I want a complete Titanic in a case. I mean, again, I, I, I'm not going to display it without that piece of the hole missing. It's just me something that it does. It's something my kids will get a kick out of. And anyone who comes around and asks about it, so I can show the engine working. That's all it's going to be. And then maybe one day, Grandad will show his kids, his grandkids the, the thing blowing steam. But ultimately, I'm not. I'm I'm a little nonplussed about that feature, to be honest with you. So the noise doesn't concern me too much. I have no intention of having this thing just constantly running. So it doesn't matter how noisy it is to me. But we'll see. It's an, it's an assumption at this point. Anyway, we're going to get this built. Um, and then we're going to, to take a look at it. Um, there's not a lot to it. Uh, it. It's just gears in and they do provide you, which is quite nice of them, uh, a cotton bud and lubricant. So we can lubricate the gears. Lubricate your gears. Lubricate your gears, right? If you think you've put enough lube on, you haven't, right? That's that's kind of rules to live by. If you think you've used enough, you haven't, right? Use some more. Use it all up. You ain't got to save any of this. You ain't got, you ain't got to be sparing on it. Use it up because the better lubricate those gears are, the better they're going to run, uh, and probably the quieter they're going to be. Um, so don't be shy with uh, with your lubricant. Use use plenty of it. <laughs> um, I'm such a child. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. Right, let's get this built. Let's get into a gearbox, and um, at the end we're going to have a talk. We're going to have a talk about swimming pools of all things, the swimming pool of the Titanic. Um, so let's get into this. Okay, so this is the piece we're going to start with, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in. Um, the uh, the shafts. That's gonna be the first thing we're going to do. So we've got four little metal shafts that are gonna go in here. Now they're all exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you put in where. They are all going to. They're all gonna fit. And they're all gonna do the same thing. So again, use the uh, use the barrier method if you can, because these are gonna be rolling all over the joints. So where are these gonna go? Okay, so we're gonna put one in there. We're gonna put another one in here it's just in there so you can see those two and then we are going to put this third one in the furthest hole along here and then finally number four is going to sit in there okay so we've got the beginnings of our gearbox uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use four gears and these are going to be we should make sure we're using the right ones because the pictures aren't exactly helping here but these no these are the right ones these are the correct ones and we're going to put these onto the spindles now again don't let me i'm i'm worried now i've scared you off with with talking about noisy ecto-1 gears don't be you know because it might just be me assuming that the the ecto-1 was was just a bloody noise and i think it was the moat more than anything that did it um, okay, so we're going to put that one on there, that one on there, 
That one on there. And that one on there. And see already that's weird. Because those meet. Oh no, that's supposed to be like that. Okay, so those two meet. Those two don't. That's fine, there's a little gear gonna go in there. Right. So that's those ones done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take uh, our next three gears, which are the ones that have, you'll see the difference with these ones now. Oops, crack these out. Hate bags. Right, so let's have these ones out. So these are the ones we've got here. Uh, and we are going to place these to interlock with these cogs. So the first one's gonna just drop in there like so. And we got that one interlock in. This one's gonna go in there like that. That one's gonna drop in there like that. That's it, that's all we need to do. Uh, now we are going to use uh, the D cog, which is 35 left in the hole in the center of the gearbox, both ends of the same. It's got to be fitted either end first, and that is this one here. That just drops in there like that. So that's that one done. And then finally, we've got this tiny, tiny, tiny one here, which is going to, no, it's not. I'm jumping ahead there. Where are we going with that one? Uh, we're gonna lube our gears. We're gonna lube our gears. Get your mind out the gut, people. I'm just talking about gears. All right, so again, quite simple. I'm just going to take our bud, get into a lubricant, then we're going to leave the teeth of all of these gears uh, and also the pins that are holding them in as well just to keep this this nice and done. So I'm going to get that done and then we'll come back. Okay, so we are suitably lubricated. Now something I can show you here is underneath this one there is this hole here. You put lube in the hole. So that gives this gear a room to move and then we put this little gear in there. Now that is all of our gears in place, all lubricated, all in place. Uh, now all we need to do is put the gearbox housing uh, on top of this. Uh, so that is going to sit over like so. He hopes, he prays, he dreams. It does. Uh, now we're going to screw it into place. Uh, and we're going to use CP screws to do that. So let's get those prepped up and ready. Uh, okay. Uh, let's get this gearbox closed up and then we'll see if it if it works. That's one. So I actually asked this on Iron Man. I'm curious if anybody uh, does this. But I was always taught to do screws opposite to each other. Spider webbing. Um, my, uh, my craft sign technology teacher used to call it. It's always spider web your screws. No idea why. I mean, maybe he was just, you know, mental. But <laughs> it was, it was. I, I, I can't not do it now. So I always, I always go in the opposite. I always go in the diagonals. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason behind it. There's probably some old school reason. I don't know if it actually does anything. But I can't not do it. It's one of those things where it's a learned behavior. I can't shake. So it's almost like OCD now for me. I always have to go to the opposite. It's kind of a waking nightmare when there's only like three screws in something. I'm like, oh my god, because I can't spiderweb it. But that's that's how it was always always told to me. It always goes to the opposite. Start with one corner and go to the opposite corner. I don't know why. I, don't, I genuinely don't know there's a reason behind it. But here we go with our sixth and final screw. Let's hold this together. Now, you're the more astute much you have noticed the mystery box up here. So inside here. Are what are essentially our, our propeller shafts. Uh, ah, massive, aren't they? Uh, so, we're going to have to test this gearbox using one of these, I believe. So what this says is we're going to insert this in here and we're going to turn it clockwise and all three of the sockets will rotate anti-clockwise and only two of them will rotate. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this happening, so we're going to put this in here. Now apparently, if I turn this, 
all three will rotate, which they are. So we're going clockwise there and all three are rotating. Now if we go anti-clockwise, my god it works. The middle one doesn't move. So clockwise all three go, anti-clockwise only two of them go. Works! And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, is the gearbox complete. That's it, we're done. Um, now, very exciting coming up in the next one because we have a lot to do, but we're going to have a very quick talk about that now. That's it, that's our gearbox complete. You can get an idea of the size of it against a giant middle-aged man, if you if you see it that way. Um, it works beautifully. Uh, and, and it relatively silent at this point. We'll see when there's an engine churning through it. <laughs> that's going to sound, uh, but, but we won't know yet. Um, that's it for this one. If if you enjoyed that uh, and you just stick around for the build instructions, thank you very much. Please remember to like and subscribe. It helps us massively. If you're sticking around for our Titanic talk, we're talking about the swimming pool. Now, there is a famous dad joke, terrible dad joke, where it's like, did you know, uh, here's an interesting about the Titanic, the, t the pool on Titanic is still full. Um, yeah, of course it is. Um, but what do we know about the Titanic swimming pool? Well, the Titanic, in its opulence, would have the best of everything. So it did have a very ornate, um, for its time, swimming pool um, that looked like this. So the Titanic pool was open to both men and women, but it wasn't free. Unlike everything else that was free to first class, the pool was not. If you wanted to use the pool... You had to pay, and it was 25 cents to swim in the pool. And for your 25 cents, you also got free costume. Now, I don't know if um, that was a rental, or whether or not you, you got to keep it. But um, that's what you got. So with with your 25 cents, you got a costume as well. Um, men and women could not swim together. It was not the done thing. Um, so men could swim um, 10 till... Uh, one, and women could swim one till three. Um, so that's that's how it worked, and you had to pay twenty five cents to to use it. Uh, there was a free swim, so between the hours of I want to say eight and ten, you could swim for free. Beyond that, you had to pay. I don't know why, but you you just did. It was only the second heated pool on a ship to exist. The first one was on the Olympic, and the Olympic pool is almost identical to the Titanic pool. The difference between the two is literally the placement of the clock on the back wall. The clock on the back wall is in a different place on the Olympic than it is in the Titanic. So that's how you, you can tell if you're looking at a picture of the Titanic pool or the Olympic pool. Now, even though there's a lot of missing um, photos of the Titanic, the Titanic pool there is pictures of, that is what has been shown, that isn't the Olympic pool, that is the Titanic pool. Um, so is the pool on the Titanic still filled? Yeah. Kind of. Um, famously, it was the last room on the bow to flood. Um, and because of its location, it's behind two massive um, floodproof bulkheads. The theory being, it's inaccessible. So no dive down there to the wreck has ever seen the pool. No one's been able to see the pool because it's behind these massive, massive floodproof doors. The theory being that the swim pool's probably in quite good nick. Um, because it, 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 it's not had the kind of pressures and um, a lot of the, the kind of algae and stuff that, that's got to the rest of the Titanic. This thing, it, it, chances are, is fairly pristine. Um, but we've never seen it, and we probably never will, because it's, um, it's just inaccessible. It's just inaccessible without causing massive damage to the already crumbling wreck of the Titanic. We'll never see it, but the theory being that it's probably in very good condition, because um, it would have created a, a kind of an air pocket. I mean, it'd flood, but it, it it's one of those things as well. I mean, uh, if you go deep diving on the Titanic, and I don't mean that as a pun, but you go deep diving on the Titanic about it, one of the questions that comes up a lot is a very strange one. But um, could anybody have survived the sinking? Meaning, could any been could anybody have been like an air pocket? Um, no, is is the quite the simple answer to that. No, you you couldn't survive it. You couldn't because it's. I'd rather die of the suffocation or the drowning than than the compression that would have come next because it's so far down. The pressure you'd crush is what would happen. The the oxygen isn't there to do it. You would just you would crush under the pressure, um, and that's going to be a horrendous way to die. 
So no, nobody was sat at the bottom of the Titanic in an air pocket thinking maybe they'll rescue us. That didn't happen. Um, if you went that far down, you died. But it really is that simple. Um, but yeah, I mean, who knows? One day maybe they're about to find a way into that pool and we might get to see it. But um, no, as of as of now, there are no pictures of it since the um, since the sinking. But um, it is it is that famous dad joke. Do you know the the pool's still full? Might not be. Might not be. We do, we do, we don't know what that room looks like. You never know. It might it might be. I, I seriously doubt it's completely airtight. It, but who knows? But by all accounts, the belief is that the um, that the pool will be in in very good condition, and that's what we know about the Titanic pool. Um. It's not a good dad joke. My favourite dad joke, if you don't have to read a good dad joke, it's a terrible one, but it's my favourite one, is um, why can't you see hippos hiding in trees? Because they're really, really good at it. <laughs> that's my favourite one. Um, that's all for this one. We will be coming back very soon in issue 36, which is an exciting one because all of these components are going to become one thing. So we are going to attach both of the engines to the engine room floor. Um, I don't know if we attach the gearbox yet, but I'm going to mock it up if we do. I'm going to get it on there somehow so we can take a look at it. Um, and we've got some other new parts to build. So everything in 36 is shiny and new. And we'll have another Titanic talk as well. That's it from me. Please remember to like and subscribe. It helps us massively. Um, it, it really does. And we we just we, we love having you here. We really do. We like interacting with all of you. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. You can contact us at buildingtheboysoutlook.com if you've got anything that's too big for the comments. Um, and we'll be happy to help with anything we can. Um, and we always love hearing from you as well. If, you, if you're doing something different with your build or you're like, hey, check this out, send it along, man. We'd love to see it. We really would. Um, we will be back very, very soon with issue 36 in a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. And I will catch you on the next one.